What's up guys, it's Juno. Welcome back to another LBA battle. This is actually a week, round 7, week 13 of the LBA. Um, I'm facing up against Chris, owner of the Fuchsia Village Volcaronas, which, you know, um, pretty scary team. He got over there, but anyway, we'll cover that in a second. Um, first of which, shout out to my boy D-Train for recording this. Link to his channel will be down in the description below if you do want to check it out. Um, but other than that, let's take a look at my team. First of which is Choice Scarf Excadrill, as per the huge, uh, just because it shuts down Deancey, even if it does get up to CM, which could otherwise be very, very threatening. Um, and it can EQ Rotom as well because it has Mold Breaker, so that's very cool. Uh, we also have Gothitelle, which is very nice considering he brought three walls this week. Uh, four walls, actually. Um, it depends on which you count Rotom. So, crippling as many of those as possible will be ideal. Um, also brought, I believe, Sub DD Gyarados to set up on... Um, set up on the thing known as Quagsire, which if I get a couple DDs up, I will win uh, because Waterfall and uh, Waterfall and Crunch have pretty good coverage against this team to hit everything at least neutrally. Um, then we have Halucha, which I believe is SD Pass this week um, because if I can weaken Quag or get it out of the way and Trap Mandibuzz, uh, then plus two Excadrill just slaughters his team pretty much and then uh, we have thunderous which I actually don't remember what spread this thing is running but I'm fairly certain it's useful I know that's knockoff because you know it's gen 6 you're a knockoff anyway looking at his team he has mandibuzz quagsire mega deancey uh, volcarona p2 and rotom uh, going into the going into this battle I knew my win condition was going to be fable because it's set up on like half his team and uh, honestly didn't really fear a whole lot so he ends up leading uh, rotom wash and I'm actually adamant drill this week but uh, as you guys will see he's scarf ends up paying off turn one he probably predicts my switch into um, maybe Clefable to take a hit and I just end up earthquaking him on Mold Breaker and uh, so I pick up the early 5-6 lead. Very, very helpful for me getting that out of the way. He goes into his mana buzz right here knowing that he has a pretty safe switch in uh, considering I can't touch him at all but by all means this is, this is a safe switch into Clefable. Uh, Clefable can eat any hit he wants to go for and to be honest I'm fine to just Oh, he actually ends up T-waving right here, which is a good play. He made a double. Sorry, it's sometimes hard to tell on Wi-Fi, as I just end up going for a CM, which, you know, it's a little unfortunate that I had to get T-waved, but um, would have rather taken, like, a burn or toxic, but, you know, what you gonna do about it? He ends up going into DNCs. I just call mine again. I know I can beat this thing 1v1 unless he's, like, max attack Diamond Storm, which would be relatively unfortunate, but I'm at plus two... Uh, Plus two special attack and special defense now. Um, so I can like take pretty much all of his team on because I'm actually HP rock uh, for Volcarona. He ends up going for the Diamond Storm right here, which does absolutely no damage. And I end up going for the Moon Blast, which is going to do a lot to this Deancey. And it hurts to do that to my baby girl, Deancey. Because, uh, you know, I've had a lot of fun with Deancey on the ladder and stuff. Uh, it's given me a lot of success. He just ends up going for rocks here, which to be honest, I felt like was a really suboptimal play. He could have just Diamond Stormed again and uh, gotten off another chunk of damage and possibly forced me to switch out, but I end up dodging the Diamond Storm right here. Uh, I guess punishing is kind of bad play and uh, knock him out with the Moon Blast. So press F to pay respects for DNC. Um But Clefable is just chilling here pretty much on full health and uh, there's nothing he can do about it. He ends up going out into Rogue, which is uh, the Volcarona. I'm not scared of this thing whatsoever uh, because A, I do have HP Rock, uh, which I'm going to reveal right here and is not good for him does way too much for his liking and uh, B I can just T wave him uh, with T wave him with the thing the thing being um, the thing being thunderous anyway so he gets that in a quagsire right here which does make sense it is an unaware mod doesn't really stop me at all um, from just moon blasting uh, just wanted to kind of scout his set in case he was like a rare um water absorb set but also I knew that I could really beat this thing 1v1 it didn't really matter what he did um, because I'm, like I have more moon blast like I I have more calm minds moon blast and uh, in the soft boils than he has recovers so I can beat him that way he ends up just uh, staying in rock tombing as I trap him with got the tail so there is his unaware user down. Uh, I take a 6-4 lead, very, uh, and I'm very, very happy with that. He ends up going into his Mandibuzz right here, which, you know, 
we, we've seen this before. We'll go into the electric type to take on the flying type. I did it, guys. Pointed stones dug into thunders. So that's fine. I'm just going to take a knockoff, which is a little bit unfortunate. He gets rid of my expert belt, meaning I just have to, like, fire off a T-bolt right here. Don't, don't really have much room to play around. I think that's what I do. That's what I do, right? Yeah. End up firing off a T-bolt. And uh, Fundy's going to show why he's the mascot. He's the real team player. He doesn't care about getting a good kill-death ratio. He's here to help the team. Ends up knocking off uh, P2's of Violet right there, which is actually really helpful late game. Because uh, it means that pretty much everything on my team breaks through it really well. Uh, end up going out into Dude right here. Because I kind of want to scout his spread to see if he has T-bolt or not. And uh, at the end of the day, like that that's probably my best play here. I end up taking Rock's damage. But... Um, it allows me to scout his set farther um, because I know, yeah, he does end up revealing the T-Bolt right here. So he's T-Bolt, Ice Beam, Recover, and uh, just kind of scouting his last move right here. I have no qualms with going straight away for a Rapid Spin. Uh, I don't really give up a whole lot of momentum because he can't touch me at all and uh, get a free switch into Clef anyway. Um, so now that Hazards are off the field and I believe they're gone permanently. I believe so. Yeah. Uh, so I can just weather these ice beams like a champ, although I did get a little worried here because Clef's going to get full pair. Uh, I'm going to get that nice left his recovery. Also, this battle is really after tourney, but um, with like the two minutes or the four minutes total tacked on from like the beginning and the end, it's like nine or ten minute battle, so it shouldn't be too long. Basically, I'm finally going to get off a of Moonlight right here. Not a soft boil, the Moonlight, but you know, it's good. Uh, end up restoring some HP right there. And uh, now I'm pretty much back at full. He's going to go for the T-Bolt right here just because he can. I'm going to get full paired again, which is uh, rather unfortunate. But, you know, it's okay. Because um, I know I can pretty much beat this thing no matter what it does. It goes out to Mana Buzz here as uh, I end up getting fully paired, which is a tad unfortunate. Um, he just ends up going for knockoff. And that's actually a really good play on his part as he gets rid of lefties. But uh, I get a free call mine, which is not good for him. <laughs> not good for him at all. Um, because even at plus one, Clef does a lot of work versus his team. He goes back into P2, traces my magic guard, which is nice. Uh, too bad it's not going to help him with anything. I don't, like, I very rarely bring status in the LBA. Um, I've brought, like, Toxic Thunderous once or twice, um, but whatever. I just end up firing off a Moon Blast right here, and that's going to do a lot of damage, meaning I will be able to PP stall him uh, out of recovers if I do not get paralyzed, which I do, because uh, I can just keep clicking Moon Blast, and, you know, he's not really doing anything, doing anything to me at this point. I could theoretically just set up the plus six, plus six, and sweep his team. Uh, so, you know, th this kind of shows why I drafted Clefable first overall. Um, it hasn't really been that great of an asset all year. Um, of, like, it's top achievements outside of this game are uh, dodging a gunk shot from Toxicroak, and that's about it. Uh, maybe killing Mian Chao versus, uh, versus the Sandshrews, but, you know, uh, he ends up getting a crit right there, which, you know, didn't really matter as much as it just, like, sped up the process because he was going to lose that anyway. It was either I got out at plus three or I got it at plus six. It's up to him. Um, so he goes out to Rogue, goes for the Quiver Dance right here. He has to hope I get full paired like 90 times. And uh, unfortunately for him, I'm not going to get full paired at all. And I'm knocking him out with the Rock, with the HP Rock. And I believe that is his last. Yep, that's his last. So if you guys did enjoy uh, today's LBA uh, battle. Um, oh, by the way, we advanced to uh, 7 and 6, which is great. We're like teetering at 500. But more on that to come in tomorrow's battle. Um, if you guys did enjoy, please make sure to leave a like. It really does help show support for the stuff that I'm doing here on the channel. Also, make sure to answer today's comment questions. Question, not questions. Question of the video, which is... Um, I actually don't know for comment questions video. I should, like, write down a list of what to talk about. We, we're we're going to go, what is your guys' favorite book? Because I just turned around. There's a ton of books behind me. I have t behind me I have Game of Thrones what is this book Survivor by uh, Chuck Palahinic I don't know uh, and then I have The Fountainhead and uh, Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand those are two very good books um, although my favorite book is probably either The Road is a very good book yeah, we'll, we'll just go ahead and say The Road for now. It's either The Road or 1984, but anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. If, um, with that, I urge you guys to subscribe if you guys are enjoying the constant content. And with that, I'll catch you guys on the flip-flop.